There is another type of post-earthquake behavior that is worth mentioning in the context of what I have just said in the previous analyses. And it is a case history that is known as the Wildlife Site in California. This site is in the Imperial Valley in Southern California. And at this site, there was some piezometric instrumentation installed along a valley with the hope of measuring pore pressure changes during an earthquake. Interestingly enough, the site did indeed experience an earthquake, some earthquake shaking, and the instrumentation captured the pore pressure response, which is of utmost interest. The most interesting thing about these measurements is that the pore pressures continued to rise for about six, 60 seconds after the strong motion had stopped. So we are looking here at pore pressure response or excess pore pressures. And as the shaking started, the instrumentation indicated that the pore pressures continued to rise. But then after about 20 seconds, the shaking stopped, but what is significant is that the pore pressure continued to rise for quite some time after the shaking had stopped. And the curious question is, what could cause this or why would this happen? Because it is, of course, of great significance that there is this type of response once the shaking has stopped. The thinking is, very briefly, that there was progressive collapse of the soil grain structure due to stress redistribution. Once there was a zone of liquefaction, there was some strength loss. The strength loss led to some stress redistribution. The stress redistribution itself led to further liquefaction and excess pore pressures. The further collapse and further liquefaction once again led to further stress redistribution and a further liquefaction. And it was the stress redistribution that resulted in the pore pressures continuing to rise after the earthquake shaking had stopped. To do this type of an analysis, it would ideally require a fully coupled strain softening type of analysis. Unfortunately, this type strain softening type of analysis is not available in the current version of GeoStudio. Anybody who is interested in this case history, here is the reference. It's a paper in the ASCE Journal of Geotechnical Engineering and it is the result of Professor, sorry, Mr. Gu's PhD thesis at the University of Alberta. I won't go into further detail about this uh, case history here, but it is of great interest to note that there is response that happens after the earthquake has stopped shaking and that the pore pressures could possibly continue to rise after the shaking has stopped. So the key points about this introductory session on Quake W and earthquake engineering in GeoStudio is that geotechnical earthquake engineering is multifaceted. There's many aspects to this. And different conditions, site conditions, require different types of analysis. We cannot solve all the problems with one dynamic analysis we need different approaches. GeoStudio makes this possible with its integrated feature. We can use SEEPW, we can use SLOPEW, QUAKEW, and SIGMAW, and we can use them all together to look at the multiple facets that are involved in earthquake engineering when we have, are wanting to look at permanent deformation. So the key point here, 
once again to repeat is the multifaceted nature of the problem and that it takes uh, various modules modules in GeoStudio to do this type of analysis. This then brings us to the end of the Quake W session one, a brief introduction of how to use Quake W, what can be done with Quake W, and how Quake W fits into the GeoStudio suite of software products.